I'm Coach Mandy Carver, and I've got next. You next up and you ain't been on sports like talk like what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next and you up next. Keep the queens go hard. Rise the star on the big scene, make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat, don't settle for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flesh. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready say go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? T Nation, welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a premier platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. That's right. We are finding rising stars in our community who are doing big things and living out big dreams. And today we're going to take you on the court. And on the sidelines, as we got one of the most popping up and coming coaches in the game. We traveling out west today, y'all, to Fresno State and introducing you to the talented assistant associate. Oh, oh I almost messed that up, KT. The associate head coach. Wait, nine season at Fresno. Let's give it up for Dylan Montana's very own coach, Mandy Carver. How you doing, coach? I'm great. Thank you. That was a lovely intro. I'm ready. Hey. Well, <laughs> lovely intro for an amazing, lovely coach. I mean, we got we got to reciprocate around this thing. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, hey, if this is your first time checking out the show, welcome to the platform. I am your host, the mouth of the South Louisiana, uh, 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 the mouth of the South B. Jones, the OG Louisiana animal, all things, everything Louisiana. Mr. Yeet is in the building. I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother, the architect, the choir storm, the guru. The head coach, KT. How you doing, Kev? B. Jones, I'm doing great, man. That intro was pretty fire. Then you got the mind, you got kind of dry. But, man, I I see what you're doing. But I'm doing great, B. Jones. Let's do it, man. Let's go. All right. Well, if this is your first time checking out the show, we appreciate you so much. Everybody and their mama got a podcast, but you chose to rock with us. So that means a lot. Listen, we need you to help us out because the momentum that we got right now in season three, over 350 episodes recorded, it is crazy. The talent. The, the stories, the features that we got are going just bananas and we can't do it without you. And guess what? You can help us out in a major way, free of charge. Won't cost you anything. All we have to do is on the count of three, SLT Nation. Let's lock arms, join hands, and smash that subscribe button. The, is Bulldog Nation going to rock with us, Coach? I hope so. I mean, we got great fans, so let's v. go. Let's throw the yeah. V's up. Let's throw the V's yeah. up. All right, here we go. On the count of three. One, two, three. Boom. Hey, thank everybody for smashing that. I, that was my favorite part of the show because we just got so many new family members. Welcome to the family. And Kevin and I, we don't take family lightly. We mean that. We don't do fans. We don't do followers. We do family members. So if you smash that subscribe button, I am your big cousin now. Hey, without further ado, Kevin, don't let the, the bun and the, and the smile fool you. Coach Carver is a bucket. And she'll get a like she'll get a bucket on you right now. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. We're gonna talk about the evidence, the receipts that's out there on the internet that tell you about Coach Carver. All right. But Kevin, good luck. Coach Carver, welcome to the Sports Light Talk Initiation. B. I think you're trying to set me up for a one-on-one game, and that's not gonna happen. I already made a fool of myself a couple of weeks ago, so I'm done with that. All right, coach, no, to you, initiate you. Need you need to play. You know what? If it's going to get us views, let's go. All right. To initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. Whew, all right. Um, it's hard to pick just five, but um, I'm going to start with, I'm going to build it up, build it up. So number five, Whitney Houston, all time great. I sound like her in the shower. Okay. But yep. that's the only place. Um, <laughs> number four, I love Tupac. 
Okay, I know that. Like, I know all the words to a lot of songs that um, not appropriate for this platform. Uh, a, <laughs> no, no, Coach Kevin is a, Z, Kevin is a big time. <laughs> Jay Z. Okay, Ke- Kevin yep. a big Tupac fan though. Okay, and then um, Beyonce at number two. I know that's not you know Beyonce at number two doesn't sound great, but it's because I'm a huge, huge Mariah Carey fan. I've been to three concerts. I've done like the, you know, I've, I've got to like hang out with her a little bit um, in Miami. Oh, years ago, I weaseled wait, my wait, way. Wait, so we can't just let you, no, we can't let you just gloss over there. You got a chance to hang out with Mariah Carey? I mean, I say, I say I got to hang out with her. We were in the same party. Um, I, oh, I yeah. made my way to the, to the after party. And did, did you get um, to go shake yeah. a hand and like introduce yourself to her though? No, I okay, okay. This, this is you yeah. Know, I got you. I, I, I got you. I, I got you. I want to be uncool, so this is what I did. <laughs> you caught eyes with it though. You locked eyes with Mariah Carey though. Yeah, I we did. We about. made eye contact. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> All right, B. So that was a legendary top five she just gave. I think so. She kind of cheated though. You throw Whitney Houston on the list, like your list better than everybody else's automatically. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Tupac, but, your list better than like Tupac and and, and Whitney. Come on, bro. Well, what B Jones? That's, I'm good. I'm she's a legendary coach. <laughs> no, you, you you did good, coach. So what we like to do, we like to rank everybody's top five, and the highest you can get is five. But with a list like that, there's no way I can give you less than five. There's Let's no way go. I can give you less. Than, I, there's no way I can give you less than ten. Yeah. B. Jones, how long? How long has she been coaching? Fourteen years, man. Give her fourteen. <laughs> Great job, B. I was a little, I was a little worried about that for a second, man, but that was good. Great job, man. Yeah, that was a Louisiana right, fourteen. So if it was off by one, <laughs> y'all already know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who was your favorite superhero and why? Um, I love Wonder Woman. I think, I mean, the name is like built right in. Um, I think, you know, coaching young women, I want them to be like Wonder Woman, fearless and fierce and, you know, out to to rule the world. Okay. So since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? Oh my gosh. They're so, the options are endless. Um, My theme song would be All I Do Is Win. Okay. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. No matter what. Yeah. <laughs> all, right, all right. So if you could shadow anyone for a week and learn from them, they could be either dead or alive. Who would it be and why? Um, I would love to shadow Phil Jackson um, as he was like building the, the bulls. You know, not, not once they had been established, but I think his like, his methods, his, um, you know, Zen approach to all of that, how he got superstars to work together and win. Mm. I would love to just, you know, absorb all of that and and see what that was like. All right. So, um, I asked you your favorite superhero early. You said Wonder Woman, and we know she's a part of the Justice League. You're an associate head coach. So the next step for you is to get your own team. With that said, I want you to assemble your dream coaching staff and you got four spots. So who you got? Okay. All right. Now, because it's my dream, my dream staff, it doesn't have to be realistic, right? Like it's, um, it's a little bit like, yes. Um, yeah. I, I mean, Don Staley, who doesn't want Don Staley on their staff? Like, you know, yeah. she ever wants to come work for me. It's an open invitation. <laughs> hey, for real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, as well as Becky Hammond. Like, come on over. Like, let's go. We're having a dream staff. Um, oh, my goodness. This staff yeah. is already. I know. So, and then um, I have a brother that is a high school football and basketball coach, and I'd love for him to work for me. I think that'd be really fun to, you know, get to work with your family a little bit. Um, and, you know, he's as sports praised as I am. So I think that would be, that'd be fun. And then my former college, um, head coach, she's now retired, but I would love to, to bring her on board. And that's kind of my, my dream staff. Who, who, what's her name? Uh, Artie McAnally. Okay. All right. 
So what advice would you give your younger coaching self? Gosh, be patient. Um, I think that's the hardest part in all of athletics. Doesn't matter what sport you play. Um, doesn't matter what position you're in, in coaching. I think you really got to have that, that patience. And I would, um, you know, tell myself to just learn, write everything down. I've gotten better at that as I've gotten older and kind of appreciate all of the, the people that have helped you along the way. All right. So who in your coaching circle is the best person to follow on Twitter? Oh, that's a tough one. I think there's um, some really good people out there to follow on Twitter. Um, I will say my coworker, um, Shannon Bush, she, she's like, social media she's on there all day she's on tiktok not not as much like posting original content but um checking it out you know on twitter on instagram she's uh she's on there she's retweeting she's she's got thoughts um and she's kind of uh likes those inspirational quotes and things so good to to check that out all right so tell us how your friends outside of basketball how will they describe you Oh gosh. Um, my friends outside of basketball, they, they would say I was funny. Um, I like to have a lot of fun. I like to laugh. I'm always up for anything. Um, I'm pretty spontaneous, pretty independent. Um, and I think, uh, that I'm also caring and, and a good friend in there for them. It's B. Jones, I got another one. Can I put on the spot real quick? B. Jones, I'm gonna put on the spot. Yeah, real get quick. him, man. Get him. Let's do this. All right. So, so it's karaoke. And you, you like Whitney Houston. What is that one Whitney Houston song you're going to go to to sing? Oh, gosh. Um, well, the, um, the duet between Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston Ooh. would be the one. Because then I combine both of my faves, right? But I don't know if I could do both parts. <laughs> I would, I would hey, that's, that's where B. Jones and I come in. We'll, you take one part. We'll try to sing the other one for you. Okay. Jones, I, she I, thought, I thought she was going to do the bodyguard. I thought she was going to say the bodyguard, man. I, I don't know the name of the I mean, song, The Greatest classic, Love or something. But if I can combine yeah. two of my faves. Yeah. I will always love you. That's what you're talking about, B. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So the most important thing in life will always be family, and we really mean that. So allow me to reintroduce our newest family member, Coach Carver. But before you take over, B. Jones, and I always almost forget this, please go to our website, sltugotnext.com. On there, you can find out more about B. Jones and myself and meet the rest of our You Got Next family. Now, B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother. Man, we we about to crash course a lot of information in 12 minutes. So y'all buckle up because this is about to be crazy. Coach Carver, welcome to the family. The first question I ask all, all my coaches, when did you fall in love with the game of basketball? I think it, it was a little later. Um, you know, I wasn't like the typical little, little kid. It was a little bit later. Um, I was really tall. And it was kind of like the the thing that once I was really tall and very uncoordinated, um, you know, my family was trying to figure out how to help my myself and uh, you know make sure that I had some coordination. So I was I was put into basketball in fifth grade. Um, before that, it wasn't really on my radar, and I instantly loved it because I was so bad at it. And, um, <laughs> it was a challenge for me. I mean, all my friends were so good and they had been doing it, you know, so many years, um, sooner than I had. And so I loved that challenge of getting better and, um, you know, competing with myself every day to, to not be the one that was on the end of the bench and not be the one that, you know, was <laughs> not good at all. So wh when did it, when did you grow into that body and when did it, when did it like become, you were different? All of a sudden you surpassed your friends and you started getting college looks and the convert, the, the headlines and the clippings when y'all were in high school, Mandy Carver dropped 16 and 16. You know what I mean? When, when did those things change? Uh, not till, yeah, towards the end of my freshman year of high school. So it took that whole, you know, that whole awkward junior high level for me to, to kind of figure it out. And then. And then once I started to get better and I got good at, 
you know, basketball and, you know, knowing how to move my body and not flail around, um, I really, you know, kind of took it to the next level and, and really made it um, my passion and, you know, worked even harder. Well, I'll tell you what, I enjoy doing research on all of our guests, but you, it was a fun ride doing research on you. I mean, so I got to start. I got to start with the epic picture. And if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, y'all go check out our IG. She had a picture of her playing against Cheryl Swoops. And you actually, you said, did you make the bucket? Or, or what? T- tell us about that picture with you and Cheryl Swoops. Yeah, so um, I had the opportunity to participate in two games in the WNBA out of college. Um, and that was actually a last second play that was drawn for me to take the shot of, of the half. Um, and like we run the play and I all I can think about as the ball is in my hands is Cheryl Swoops guarding me. Cheryl Swoops is guarding me. Like, don't get blocked. And <laughs> <laughs> did not make the shot, but you can't tell from the picture. <laughs> no, nah, you can't tell from the picture. It, le- it left a lot of us wondering, man, what happened on this play? All I know is you said is, hey, I, I didn't, didn't get blocked. blocked. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you did. But what was that like playing against the legendary Cheryl Swoops? That's crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, every the the moments that I had when I was able to participate in the WNBA were, I mean, legends, legends. I just I was walking around like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like you know, you you, you watch these people on TV or you grow up like, yep. you know, um, watching them in college, and and it was so surreal that then I was like in their presence and that I was yep. you know a part of it. It was such a great experience i was i mean still to this day i can't even i can't even believe it so amazing all right well i'm not i'm not done with your social media yet because then i kept scrolling down and there is the coolest now this is one of the coolest clips i've uh, i've seen over doing the research kevin there were two announcers doing a pregame before a tournament game and they said hey big buckets mandy carver this is one that y'all gotta watch she put up all of this against the pre uh, the previous team and she is one of the dopest players on 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 the planet right now and you i mean like to me it kind of gave me these goosebumps i'm like i see that happening every game but to think back to take that flash back to i don't know if that was early 2000s or late you know late 1990s but to take that flash back and to see what you were doing and like you are a problem out there on that court and you are a leader of that Idaho State team. T- tell us what it was like playing at Idaho State. I loved it. I loved it. It was such a great experience. I had amazing teammates and I had a, a great coaching staff that really um, developed me, pushed me and, you know, held me accountable and made me kind of the the coach I am and the person I am today and allowed me to, you know, um, work through some of my mistakes and work through some of my, you know, issues. If you look at the stats, I had 11 assists my freshman year and not because I didn't play. I played a lot. I started almost every game. Um, it was because I just didn't pass. Um, and so (laughs) it allowed me to, um, you know, develop and work through that. And my teammates did too. And, you know, some of those teammates are some of my best friends today. Um, and we were able to, you know, work through some of that, um, you know, sharing the ball. Um, and now it's kind of a funny story that, that we laugh about, but such a great experience. I, I loved my, my college, my four years of college. And I think that's really um, impressed upon me how, important it is to be a good role model and coach and you know make these women get the most out of their their experience all right well, we're gonna talk about helping women to grow and grow in the game but last last social media tidbit i'm gonna give you a half court fridays coach you just go out there you launch it and still got that bucket from half court that that is absolutely crazy but what what i liked about that i mean i know hitting half quarters everybody can do it it's not it's not like you were a phenom for doing it but it was the reaction from your players that's what i love it was the it was the slow mo all the players was like oh coach now tell us about your relationship with the girls on your team 
Yeah, I think that's something that's really important to me is to have a good relationship with the players that I coach. You know, they're going through such an important time in their life from 18 to, you know, 22, 23. And um, so many changes are happening for them. And I've been through it. And so I, I feel like, you know, if I can give them some, you know, reassurance, some advice, be there for them in, in any way. Um, it also, you know, helps when you have that off the court relationship that you can be a little tougher on the court and, uh, you know, the response is, is better. And I, I love that I get to work with young people. I like to think it keeps me young, like I'm still in college. So, um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I love that that's my job. I don't consider it work. Well, coach, this is going to be a little bit of a tougher conversation for you because I looked at your resume and you built a, 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 a lot of history. You built a lot of equity in what you do and who you are from playing ball overseas. Like you say, you played two games in the WNBA. A lot of your career was spent overseas learning the game over there, meeting different people, learning unique cultures, which you brought back here, which has made you a super diverse coach, right? But at the same time, we got Brittany Griner coming on national television saying, I'll never play overseas again uh, unless I'm representing my country. What 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 are, you, what are your thoughts about that? Somebody who who established themselves overseas from coaching and playing to now you you have this new movement where it's about to be almost frowned upon to play overseas. Yeah, I think it's really unfortunate that that women professional players have to go over there. You know, especially the the talented ones that are in the WNBA to you know make enough money to continue to to do to work in their you know profession and as their passion um and i think people underestimate how hard it is to go over there and how different it is i mean i did it for seven years and um it was really hard every single time i went you know over you're there nine to ten months you do get to come home for christmas but um you know it, you're you're traveling in a different country. The basketball is not the same. The language isn't the same. The food's not the same. Like the first time I went to the grocery store, I was like, oh my goodness, where's the, where's the milk? And it's on a shelf. It's not even refrigerated. And you know, just things like that. It's so, and you know, you have a huge time change to like talk with your family and friends and it, it's really, really hard. And, you know, I, I commend all the people that do it, especially the women that play year round. I mean, you're, especially as an American um, in those foreign countries, there's a lot of expectations for you to score all the points, to win all the games. Yes. Um, and, you know, your body is taking a toll because they don't also have the same access that we do in terms of like, you know, recovery and sports medicine that we're used to. So those women that can go and do that year round, like I would always come back in the, in the summer and I was just done for like <laughs> Two months, I was like, my body yeah. was done, my mind was done. So the the fact that they do that is is amazing. I hope we can get to a point where that is not the case, and there's more teams and more access for women to stay in America and continue to play. Because I think you've seen with the Final Four this last season, the viewership was up. It was so exciting. The game, you know, the highest scoring game in in the the history of a championship game i think we're right you know that right on the edge of, of women's basketball exploding you must have saw our last episode because that's exactly what i said i said this is the summer of breakout this we're about to see a whole new level of attention and it has it's a lot of things you're wearing the more than an athlete t-shirt that's part of one of the movements uh you got the nil is changing things you're, you're seeing you know, some of these young ladies make millions of dollars through their skills but you also saw women are starting to get starting to play to a level that people are like, okay, this is real basketball. But, you know, a couple of years ago, I was ignorant. I, I, I was guilty of this looking at the game and like, oh, they're not dunking. They're not throwing alley-oops. They ain't doing this until Kevin Kevin took me to my first game. And I was like, bro, these games are better than the guys' games because they can't rely on just their athleticism to make plays. They got to play as a team. They got to move as one, and they got to hit shots. So I'm telling y'all, if y'all ain't watching the women's game, go watch it right now. But the last thing, Coach, because I'm, I'm running out of time, I, uh, but I want to talk about you as a coach. You're an associate head coach, so eventually I know the goal is to keep rising, to keep doing your thing. But uh, what, what am I going to get out of a Mandy Carver coach team? What, what am I going to see on this ball court? Yeah, I think um, it's going to be high energy. 
We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to work hard. We're going to compete. Um, I'm not like a yeller or a screamer. I don't think that this day and age, that's um, how kids, you know, you can reach kids. I don't think they react to that. You know, I, I want to have a standard, hold them to that standard, and then they hold each other to that standard. And, you know, I think the way that, that I coach is, is passionate. It's high expectations. It's a lot of offense, probably, you know, we're working on those assists. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> high energy on defense and, you know, trying to get after it. And I think it's a really, it, it's a really fun product to be a part of. Now there's first off, Fresno state is, is, you know, that's part of the beautiful part of the country. But, uh, what, what, what do you say to somebody you, you're trying to recruit them? Why, why come play for Fresno state and be a part of this team? We have an incredible fan base, an incredible community. We don't have a professional sports team here. So you have over half a million people that are Bulldog fans. And now there comes a little bit of pressure with that, right? If you go somewhere like, you know, out in the community and they recognize you and they'll be like, mm, you only had four points. But there's also <laughs> the other side of that is like, you won and you had 20, like, let's go. It's, it's a really, you know, it's that, that, that sports crazy environment that I think for women to be able to play in that environment, it's so, it's so exciting. It's so fun. And not everywhere in the country has that. You know, we have great fans at, at our, our home games. Um, I think we have great coaching staff. I think we have great people that we work with. And I, the, our system, I think, is a really fun system to be a part of. The last question. Coach, I've always wondered this since I was been a, a kid. I don't know why I haven't Googled it, but the green V. What what does that V stand for with Fresno State? Why why is that such a big deal? Yeah, so the, the Central Valley is where Fresno is uh, located. And the Central Valley produces, uh, I want to say around 80, 85% of the nation's food. So we produce, you know, the, yeah, all the almonds, the oranges, the avocados, the grapefruits, the lettuce, the tomatoes, all of that um, in this area. So it's very green. We have a, a heavy agricultural background. And so that's how we, um, you know, pay homage to that with the green bee. Wow. Okay. All right. So when we throw up the green V, we talking about what I'm eating on my dinner plate. I like it. I exactly. like it. All right, coach. Well, welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show with KT and I. We go one on one and we're going to play a little game. All right. Look at she cracking her knuckles, KT. She ready. All right. Have you, have you, have you ever played Would You Rather before? Well, we're going to see how this goes. I'm not quite sure, but we'll see. All right, perfect. Well, real simple, Coach, real simple. For those of you, this is your first time watching this. Both KT and I are going to make a pitch. One of those pitches, Kate, uh, the coach will select. Whichever one she selects, that host gets a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this game's episode of Championship Rounds. All right, so it's real super simple. We go three rounds. Whoever gets it wins. Kevin is the defending champion. All right, so here we go. Kevin, let's get it kicked off. Round number one. All right, would you rather become a head coach? And now you have a coaching tree of coaches throughout college and the WNBA or or would you rather have would you rather coach a player that becomes a head coach and wins a championship ring and in front of everybody right there with Holly Rowe standing next to him, they say I learned it all from coach Mandy Carver. Mm. I think I'd rather be a head coach with a coaching tree. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I understand. No All right, round number two. Uh, no matter how many times you do that, dude, that is still funny. That's probably All right, round question. number two. All right. Round number two. Would you rather travel the world hosting your own food show on the Food Network where you and three of your closest friends interview famous athletes as they take you to their favorite places to eat in their hometowns or... Or would you rather have Netflix following Fresno State for two seasons in a Last Chance You style documentary? That's a tough one. Um, do the athletes get to benefit from the proceeds of the Netflix show? Yeah, everybody. Okay. It's NIL. Well, if we, they could get paid add. from that. Like, if our players could get paid from that, and, yes, I'll do that. I'll, I'll let All Netflix right. follow we'll, we'll, we'll write that in the contract, okay, Coach Hall? Okay. 
Yeah, that show was part right. of it, but I, that was a good one. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Don't say you I, on I, that. I'm assuming, oh. I'm assuming Netflix pay these people. I mean, yeah, yeah, they, 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 yeah, they, they got to. Be to. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for the record, yes, you would get paid, but that wasn't a original question. No, we might try to Joe. Let's go. Hey, she threw it. She threw a change up. All right, here we go. So Kevin and I, we go live every Wednesday night at eight o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We hang out with the Sports Life Talk crew, and it's a fun show. It's not just about sports. We talk about life, pop culture, all of these cool things. Part of that show because Kevin and I are bonafide sneakerheads. I mean, when I say it. We really, truly love our sneakers. We decided to infuse a little bit of that sneaker passion into this show. So for round three, Kevin and I have both selected a pair of sneakers that we would like to present to Coach. All right. And whichever one of these sneakers she select, that host will win this round. All right. And also win this game. So, all right, Coach, you ready? Okay. All right, Coach. Uh, all right, Coach. On the count of three, we need you to say, Hold that sneaker okay so i'm gonna count you down and then you say hold that sneaker and me and kevin go show you these sneakers all right here we go one two three hold that sneaker oh i gotta go with the red the red patent leather jordans i have those in baby blue <sighs> you my music Yeah, coach, thank you so much. This is an awful show. Awful. <laughs> I did like yours as well. I did. I changed them up. I changed them up because uh, I was like, "Y'all was gonna show up on my screen." Go well, it's gonna show up on the screen. Gonna look orange. See, this is yeah. This it would have been a different shoes. color. Yeah, this is the past shoes I had originally. Oh, solid, solid choice. So, but you can't see the red in them. I was like, well, I was trying to hit the red and the blue because it's all good. It's all yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I appreciate Look, that. I appreciate She's trying to be nice. She's trying to be nice about it. No, nah, coach. No. Nah. Don't be nice now that you selected his sneakers. Oh, my goodness. All right, coach. With the title of the show is Sports Life Talks, you got next. And now you got to tell everybody that's rocking with you at Mandy B. Carver. What does the future hold for you, coach? Um, I hope to one day be a head coach. Uh, right now, I'm I'm happy, um, you know, being an associate head coach at Fresno State. The goal is to, you know, win a championship, get to the NCAA tournament, and advance. So hopefully, you'll see us in the Sweet Sixteen soon. Ooh, I like I like that kind of smoke. I like that kind of smoke right there. She say we coming to the Sweet Sixteen. Y'all book a ticket. I'm finna, I'm finna catch a flight. All right, Coach. Well, you got a beautiful smile. You got a great energy about yourself. But uh, you know, one day this is all you got to hang it up, right? You got to put the put the magic marker down, and you got to le- lean your legacy onto something else. But how do you want to be remembered at Fresno State and the other schools and all the young ladies that you've impacted? How do you want people to say your name in the coaching circles when they mention Mandy Carver? I I want people to think of me as someone who did it the right way, who worked hard, was competitive, um, and was always there for the athletes. You know, I always say that, you know, I want to be invited to their weddings. I want to meet their kids. I want to, you know, be in their lives forever. It's not, you know, it's not just a two-year thing, a four-year thing. Um, I want to stay connected and and know that if they need something, they can reach out to me. And I I hope that's my legacy um, in in the coaching world. All right. All right. So do you have any shout outs you want to give? Um, Yeah. No, I'm really grateful. I think the the head coach, uh, Jamie White, who I've worked for now for nine seasons, I'm really grateful to, to be on her staff, be considered a friend of hers and, you know, get to work with her every day. I love our players. I love our team, you know, past and present. And I'm really excited about our team next year. Um, I think we're going to be kind of, um, you know, shocking because we'll be so different. So excited about all of all of those things. All right. So this is a part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell me, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same thing. With that said, Coach, who are you calling out? Who should have Okay. Next? So. Um, like I was, I was saying before I got kind of confused. Um, but one of the up and coming coaches that I think people need to know more about great person, um, great on the court coach. Like she's, she's great. Um, and 
Her name is Laura Dinkins. She just got hired at Grand Canyon um, as an assistant coach and recruiting coordinator. And I'm excited to see her career kind of take off. So I think people need to know the name. All right. Well, Coach Dinkins, you are officially on the clock. Your ticket has been punched. You got a front row seat. or Actually, you got the hot seat here on Sports Life Talk. We got to learn all about you. So we're going to be reaching out to you. We'll have Coach Carver to put a little bug in you. Hopefully, you'll, uh, you'll come on and tell everybody your story. But Coach Carver, Mandy Carver, yeah, you the truth, Coach. How tall are you, Coach? 6'2". Ooh, that's going to be awkward for Kevin to have to play you in one-on-one. I can't wait. <laughs> Coach Carver, you the truth. Your energy is electric. I, lo- I love your, your passion. I love your philosophies. You're amazing. You're super smart. You're funny. I, I can't wait to come hang out with you in Fresno State, sipping on some, some Kool-Aid. We're just going to have a good time out there. Coach, you are elite. You are extraordinary. You are tenacious. You deserve a yeet. yeet. Mandy Carver, you got next. Yeah, I love that part of the show. All right, y'all. Well, thank y'all again for watching another episode. Let's just, just as the minutes, I don't know what, what they call it when at the very end of church, Kevin, where you got to get a last second, the uh, updates the and stuff like that. The, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to do the benediction. All right, so y'all hang out as we give y'all some of the uh, the updates. But uh, the sltugotnext.com, go to our website. If you didn't get nominated or if you want to be on the show and you say, man, I, I would love to be on that show and tell everybody my story. As long as you are up next, as long as you got next material, we're going to put you on. We'll let you audition. Uh, go to our website, sltugotnext.com. Uh, click on the nominations tab and either nominate yourself or someone else that you think deserves to be on the show because we we can't find everybody, ladies and gentlemen. It's just two two brothers. We can't, we can't find everybody. Also, come hang out with us Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We go live on YouTube. So if you smash that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and boom, as soon as we go live, you'll be notified. You come hang out with us. It's a live show. It's, it's, it's impromptu So you just come in And we talk about All kind of stuff Everything It's not just about Who just scored 50 points The previous night The NBA Or nothing like that Alright And uh, what am I missing Kevin I feel like I'm missing something Oh and don't forget To like and subscribe uh, Sports like talk Everywhere Everywhere Just go to uh, Twitter YouTube Facebook It don't matter Anywhere you see Sports like talk That's us Alright So y'all can show us Some love Alright KT I'm gonna let you Close it out man Since she picked your sneakers She like you better anyway so uh cl- clearly clearly I'm just a, a third wheel on this show. You know what I'm saying? All good. All good, Coach Carl. All right, KT. But B Jones, you did a great job, man, like you always do. Coach, you're the there's like three Mandy's I've met in my life. One I can't talk to because I probably get slapped. The other one is you, and then the first one is Mandy Moore. I kind of had like the Mariah Carey situation you had. She was at Great by Me. So I walked up. I waved and she waved back. So I met Mandy Moore. Okay, but anyway, anything about me is about you. Coach Carver, thank you so much for rocking with us. Whatever you need from us, please let us know. And B Joe, we got to make the friends know, man. Man, we coming. We coming. Yeah, let's go. Hey, we love you, Magic Mandy Carver. Welcome to, hey, welcome to the family. We can't wait to kick it with you. Sports Life Talk Nation, we love y'all too. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet. See what's crazy is I knew you had next because you always working. You always grinding. You're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just, I knew you got next. You did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk out the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast the tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom. You are what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be.